Hi, big shout out to Miss Jameson's class. We're drawing and designing toolboxes. If your splat is a newer version, then you'll find little bumps one centimeter apart. I'm going to be using half a centimeter lots of times for this drawing, so I'm going to mark it right onto there. I can easily wash it off when I'm finished. You're going to need a starting point. It's 10 centimeters across and three centimeters up. That way your carryall will fit on the page. We're starting by drawing a left and right splat line. This is going to be the base of the carryall. We're extending the right line out three splat lengths. Now I'm going to clean that up using a ruler and have a look at these three points. From each of those three points, we're going to go straight up vertically one splat length. From the top of those two points, I'm going to use a ruler and connect. And down on the left side as well. Now for the top. Where exactly does that long line come to? Much easier if we start on the end and we use one splat length. By the way, you can flip your splat upside down and use it like that as well. It's exactly the same angle. So one left splat line there, no matter whether it's up or down, notice it's vertical. That's the main thing that you keep your splat straight up and down. So once I've found that point, I know it's in that direction. I can easily connect it using a ruler. That's taken the guesswork out much neater. Halfway between those two points, so right in the center, put a mark for me and do the same thing on the back edge, a little halfway mark. Next, we're drawing a vertical line, so a straight up and down line, one splat length. Same thing at the back. By the way, it doesn't matter whether you use the far edge of the splat, the center of the splat, or the left hand one. They're all exactly the same length. Here's how we add a handle. We're going to be using the small ellipse, but what angle do we put it on? Here's how you tell. It's easy. Connect those two points of the rule and give yourself a short guideline, the front and back. Now, you notice those little alignment marks? They go in line with the guideline. You just need to center onto that point. So we'll draw an ellipse there. Let's do the same thing at the back. Get the angle right, center it, boom. We're drawing a line from that corner and just touches the circle. It's called a tangent. Easy to start from the corner, lean the rule in, and drop. Let's repeat at the back. From the corner, lean, draw. Nice, it's looking really good. There's some lines now that we could remove. Let me just plan by squiggling those out and then we'll erase them. It's time to add some thickness to this surface. Let's trace around it and slide it in the splat direction. That's where we're going. Because some of the lines will be hidden, it's only the curve and that single line that we'll really see in the end. So let's have a go at that. Here's my half a centimeter, five millimeters, that I'm adding in a few places. Now it's time to redraw that curve. Here's just a short line, but it's on the splat angle. Let's firm that one in. Cool. Here's another surface. This time it's sliding towards you, but still on the same splat angle, half a centimeter wide in all of those places. Here's how we do it. Let's draw our splat angle, measure our half a centimeter forwards. I'm going to do that in a few places because I'm going to copy this line and I'm copying the curve. That's the line that I'm going to copy and draw it in. I'm going to have a go at guessing a copy of that circle. So I'm only seeing part of it, remember. That line there needs to be copied as well. 
you remember how we slide it in the splat direction? So that's the point I need to find. Half a centimetre forwards and half. Notice how I'm always measuring on the splat angle. And join it. Done. This is redrawing the curves that were lost when I rubbed out those other lines. So here's a little fix up. That's looking good. Okay, we're, we're almost there. The center of that circle is really important. I'm going to redraw it in lightly. Now I can find the center. Imagine a line that goes from the middle of one circle to the other. It's called a center line. It has a special look. Dot, dash, dot, dash. It's called a chain line. Now, the top of the handle is going to come down just a little bit. It's not quite as wide as those other circles. And the same distance on the far side of the center line, and draw that in. Now it's time to copy that curve, the end of your handle, and darken that in. Think about this large piece of timber right here. Let's imagine what the end would look like. Copy that line over a little bit. So let's first mark our half a centimeter back on the splat angle and then draw my vertical line. At the top, it'll also be on the splat angle. So let's mark that one in. If you're doing some grain on that piece of timber, then just draw it in lightly. There's a little knot. Here's how we add thickness. We're sliding that line on the left splat angle. So it's going to look something like that. Let's do it. Give yourself a guideline and mark off your half a centimetre. Before I forget, I'm going to mark in the short line on the other side as well. So take a rule, line it up with the corner and give yourself that short line. Now it's time to copy that line half a centimetre over. I draw it lightly first and if it looks good, darken it in. And I'm repeating the same thing on the far side. There's something missing from that area there. And it's the shelf. So let's draw it in. Draw yourself a vertical line halfway down. So stop right there. Now we'll draw splat lines in that direction. And the other direction. Let's extend that one using the rule. Make sure it's on your splat angle, parallel. Nice, now it's time to draw a cutting line. A cutting line is a extra dark line right around the outside of the drawing. Also, if something overlaps, it gets a dark line. That end overlaps that. Can you see there? So that gets a line too. That handle really needs a cutting line above and below, as well as that. I'm drawing a line that cuts the front in half and two lines make a gap because there's a drawer underneath. Take the gap around the corner, add a detail to grab to pull the drawer out. Here I'm adding a line to show the bottom could be some plywood just underneath the drawer. Let's cut into this piece of wood and show the end grain of the back coming all the way in. Remember to use your splat angles. So here's how the drawer would slide in the splat directions. How about if we wanted to have three drawers? They're easier to draw in, but if you wanted to slide one out, it's basically a rectangle, make it hollow, add the inside, the base, and there you go. The handle, if I was to make this on a lathe, I could change the shape of it. I could taper it. So I'm drawing a bigger circle in the middle and tapering it to the outside. I could also put some detail in it like this. A sharp pencil and a ruler is great for leaving that white highlight to look rounded. Here's how you'd make it a flat surface look shiny. Bring the grain back up again. A big shout out to the amazing Rebecca Jamieson and her class for producing this actual toolbox. Stay tuned. Part two is the rendering. Bye.